Olá a todos. Meu nome é Maurício Ama Tacano, sou professor do Departamento Acadêmico de Mecânica da Universidade Tecnológica Federal do Paraná, Campus Cornélio Procópio. Também sou coordenador do programa de extensão o Uso do Lúdico como Ferramenta de Ensino e dos projetos de extensão o Uso dos Jogos de Tabuleiro como Ferramenta de Ensino e o RPG como Forma de Lazer e Aprendizado. Ainda faço parte do grupo de pesquisa do projeto O Uso de Jogos de Tabuleiro para o Desenvolvimento e Manutenção das Habilidades Sociais. Hoje estou aqui com um convidado muito especial para falar sobre um assunto também muito especial, que é o programa Gaming Lab. Para aqueles que não conhecem, a Gaming Lab é um programa co-criado pela Asmodi, líder no mercado de jogos de tabuleiro, e também pela Innovation Factory, uma organização sem fins lucrativos francesa especializada em inovação, baseada em inteligência coletiva. Ela promove o desenvolvimento e a valorização dos jogos de tabuleiro como fonte de valor social. Quem quiser fazer perguntas ao nosso convidado, peço que vá deixando no chat, que eu vou passá-los ao final da apresentação. Caso prefira, pode escrever as perguntas em português mesmo, que eu tento traduzi-las para o nosso convidado. Futuramente, iremos postar uma versão com legendas em português, e se conseguirmos, também postaremos uma versão com legendas em inglês. Now, before the presentation, I'm going to introduce our guest. Uh, Mikel Leboris, I hope I got this right, <laughs> a.k.a. Yeah. Misha. Right. Misha. Yeah. Misha, much, much easier, is PhD in neurophysiology at INRA, National Research Institute for Agriculture. Project Manager at Asmode since 2016, and Asmode Research and Gaming Lab Manager since 2018. Hello, Misha. Thank you Hi, for joining Marcia. me today. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for joining me. Okay, so, whenever you're ready, can you tell us about Asmode and Gaming Lab, please? Yeah, sure, with pleasure. So, um, thank you for the opportunity to present my work today. Um, even if you have uh, already told everyone about a bit about myself, um, as you mentioned, oops, oh, as you mentioned, uh, my nickname is Misha. Uh, I have a background of in neuroscience, and I've decided to quit science to go into the board game industry by passion. Uh, because I was I was very fond of, of board games and I wanted to work in this universe. And a couple of years um, after working for Asmode, I had this idea to develop um, the help, the support for uh, game research. And that's how Asmode Research and Gaming Lab uh, was were created uh, two years ago now. And today uh, we are, uh, as a group, very proud of uh, the journey we have made. So. I'm here today to present you uh, all the activity we have uh, with Gaming Lab today. So just to give you a, a full overview of the context, uh, I have just one slide about Asmodee. So our motto is Great Game to Amazing Stories, uh, because today uh, we want to create universe based on major IPs, such as Catan, Ticket to Ride, Double, Pandemic, and others. Uh, these great games, these great universe are developed by studios uh, internally, and all these products are uh, distributed all over the world uh, thanks to our distribution units. Uh, so we have a network of studios and a, de a network of distributing units um, to um, give this uh, product to all the players all over the world. And today we are focused on Uh, creating universe based on IPs, and these IPs are um, worked on board games, of course, but also on digital aspects, thanks to Asmode Digital, and now in uh, new um, medias such as comics, film, or others, thanks to Asmode Entertainment. So the idea is to provide a deep experience to the players based on these IPs. And uh, thanks to that, Asmode is one of the leaders of the industry today. And um, as a benevolent leader, Asmode is willing to take care 
of our industry and of our networks and to understand our activities and the uh, players' activities as well. So that's how uh, Asmode Research was created as an innovative and international inter interdisciplinary program to promote the valorization of the game and to defend the um, uh, societal values of board games. So it's for having a vision to go beyond the entertainment and to work on the educational aspect, research aspect, or health aspect of uh, games. So that's, how, that's why we have created our first project. Gaming Lab is the first uh, project undertaken by Asmodee Research. Uh, it's a game research supported project. Uh, it was created two years ago with a partnership of the Innovation Factory. Uh, the Innovation Factory is a cluster of innovation uh, in Paris. It's, it is uh, a partner of Asmodee since a, a long time. And the first thing we have made is to establish a scientific committee to guarantee the ethic and the quality of the Game Lab program and the Game Lab selection program. But I will uh, give you some explanation uh, just afterwards. So the committee is uh, between 12 to 15 people outside of uh, Asmode and Innovation Factory. They are coming from scientific fields uh, or industrial fields, and uh, they are uh, taking the decision of every project we are supporting. The goals of Gaming Lab uh, are very simple. The first one is to support financially different kind of scientific research projects, uh, some pilot project or some PSG. I will give you some examples just afterwards. And the other um, goals is to animate our community. Our community, it's a mixed community between uh, research people, or people from the game industry, or people who are following uh, our activities uh, because they are passionate by it. So we have these two goals, and how do we proceed? Um, the first thing we are doing is call for project. We have two types of, of it. Uh, the first one, it's an international one uh, for short-term projects. Uh, these projects are um, designed for 12 months, uh, the grants related to that, it's up to 15k euros for a year. Each year, we are selecting three to five projects. And we have already done that uh, this year and the, the year before. And the next call for project will be open in January for selection around uh, April and uh, May. So this is how we are selecting short-term projects international. And on the other hand, we have another uh, call for project for PhD uh, that time. This PhD is uh, fin financed thanks to a SIF grant. It's a French collaboration where we have some cash back from the state. Uh, so for that moment, in, in that moment, uh, we can have only French collaboration for this kind of, of project. But of course, we want to develop uh, international uh, PhD as well. So we are looking for solution to offer some international grants in the future. So on one hand, we have international short-term project. And on the other hand, we have more long project for three years with a French PhD. So to give you some um, uh, more detail about the supported projects in 2019, we have selected three uh, first projects. The first one from France um, was made by Philippe Robert from Nice University, and his team studying how board games can improve the environment of uh, Alzheimer patients and how uh, dedicated board games can help them in different kind of uh, environments, such as in hospital or with uh, health care at home or with uh, families at home. So th the study is finished, the final report is made, and we will be able to uh, diffuse the knowledge um, in the coming weeks or months. Um, the second project, uh, led by Melissa Rogerson from uh, Australia, and the University of Melbourne. Uh, she is studying the digital part of the hybrid board games uh, in, in the industry today and how the players uh, are, are 
appeal or attract by this kind of game. She's trying to make a map of uh, this new um, type of board games these days. And her study is, is coming to an, to an end uh, very soon. And the third project is a project uh, led by Annick Peltier from Canada. Uh, she wants to prove that with a, a board game program, you can have a meta uh, regulation, a condition of regulation, and improve uh, the uh, elementary school um, uh, results of the of the children. Uh, she has a long uh, program to to make with the, with the students. Um, Unfortunately, uh, the COVID in March uh, hit the project very hard. So we wanted to wait a bit and maybe the project will be able to restart in 2021, but uh, it's still in the process. So for the first year of our call for project, we, we are very proud of the variety of the, of the theme approached and the diversity of countries selected. So it was um, a, a big achievement for us one year ago. And uh, in 2020, we were uh, very uh, surprised and very proud again by the diversity uh, of the projects selected and the diversity of uh, countries as well. So this year, we have selected five new projects, one from the US, one from the UK, one from Brazil, one from France, and one from Spain, with, with different uh, topic, as you can see. Uh, one project um, from the US uh, is looking for uh, an anthropological um, uh, topic, how African traditional board games can influence social cohesion in Cameroon. Um, Liam Cross from uh, Edge Hill University will study how can board games can help uh, autistic spectrum people um, in social skill or developmental. Um, Ayala Honda from uh, Brazil, uh, as you may know, and will study how board games can be uh, involved into the development of social skill. Um, Marion Sour and Regis Cotino from France will study how you can define a protocol to study board games uh, sessions. And at last, um, but not the least in Spain, we have Jorge Moya who will study how the board games can help uh, children with risk of social exclusion. So once again, we were very proud of the selection of the diversity. And of course, these uh, projects are um, waiting to start their protocol due to the uh, sanitary uh, environment situation. But um, I'm sure they will find a way to um, stop this project very soon. To complete that, uh, we have our first PhD starting uh, this month. Uh, Lea Martinez from France will start our first PhD. Uh, she will study how board games can involve into uh, connecting function in teenage and young adults. Uh, she will make her, her study uh, in CERCA, a laboratory from, from, from Poitiers. And um, so once again, uh, we are very proud to have our first PhD and Leah is at the same time a PhD student in the laboratory and the first uh, Asmodee research um, employees. So um, we are very happy to, to make this project um, started these days. So like this, I give you an overview of all the projects uh, we are supporting today. And as I've already told you, uh, the second objective of Gaming Lab is to make uh, an animation of our community. Um, before the sanitary uh, crisis, uh, we used to make uh, different uh, events. In, in France, we are used to organize some meetups where we are choosing one theme. We are inviting experts to, to speak about it, around 50 people uh, in teams. Uh, these events, you have the different uh, topics we have already made. Uh, of course, um, we, are, we are trying to find a digital solution to do that online. We have done one, the last one we have made uh, last June was online. And we are thinking on finding new ways to develop that uh, for 2021. 
maybe it will be more international uh, and, and less French, uh, but it's in our uh, to do job to do that. And of course, we wanted to make some talks and game events to give the opportunity to researchers to present their studies to a broader audience. Of course, I wanted to have the three main board games events for us in France, in the US, and in, in Germany. Um, and hopefully in 2021, we will be able to, to make that again. Uh, or maybe we'll have to find a solution to do that um, digitally again. So. We are working on this um, solution and maybe something new uh, will happen in this animation program uh, on a digital level for next year. Um, our next move uh, for January 2021, uh, we are organizing our second symposium. Um, in 2018, we have organized our first symposium to uh, start Gaming Lab officially. And so today, I'm happy to announce that in January, the second symposium will be um, happening. Uh, it will be an online event where all the Gaming Lab supported projects uh, will be presented and by the lead researchers uh, themselves. So we don't have the final date, date today, but we will be able to communicate about that very, very shortly. So, it should have happened in, in November, but we have postponed a little bit in order to organize a better day um, of the online uh, organization, of course. Uh, we are also uh, in partnership with the Board Game Studies Colloquium. It's an association about game studies in general. E uh, every year you have a colloquium um, organized in a country. Uh, in 2020, it should happen it should have happened in Paris, but of course it was cancelled. So we are still hoping to organize a 2021 edition in Paris. So for the moment, um, it's still in process and we are hoping it will happen. And to just finish about the animation um, action, uh, recently we have opened an online channel on Discord, a dedicated gaming lab Discord, um, specifically for uh, researchers in order to enhance the international interaction in this domain. Uh, it's not public, it's very focused on uh, professional. So we are trying to uh, spread the game lab information there about call for project, about um, uh, events. And also we are trying to, to create networks between the different um, community all over the world. Uh, so to sum up, uh, today Game Lab is a, a support uh, research uh, gaming program uh, with eight short term projects supported, one PhD in 2020. And the second objective is to diffuse the knowledge uh, thanks to events. And of course, we are looking for digital solutions. So today I was hoping to present you the program, maybe giving you some idea about collaboration and of course, uh, having your feedback. So uh, I think I'm done and I hope you have questions. Okay. Hello. Thank you for your presentation, Misha. Thanks. Very good. I, I think people were liking it. I already have some questions here. Um, some people sent me some questions even before the, the, the live started. So cool. uh, some of them you already answered, but I'm going to ask them anyway. <laughs> because to, to be more clear, I think. Uh, first question is how to apply for gaming lab. Uh, uh, actually, to, I can ask. I, I can yeah. ask all these questions at once because I, I think they are all related. How to okay. apply? Who can apply? When? And why? <laughs> why should someone <laughs> apply? <laughs> okay, so where to apply? Uh, all our call for project will be uh, posted on our website. So we have a dedicated website, uh, gamelag.org, I guess. Um, the colorful project webpage will be uh, bilingual. 
um, in French and in English. Um, so there, there is um, um, an asset to download and to um, subscribe. So you have to make an application uh, of uh, on the on the web on the web page. Uh, it's very easy. Um, last year we don't have any trouble to to receive the submissions. Um, um, it will be it will be uh, online on our website again. Uh, the second question is when. Um, so the international call for project for gaming lab uh, will be open in mid January. Um, so yeah, mid January will be will be the date. Uh, we will let like three and a half months to apply. So we will have since mid January to end of uh, April. After that, uh, we will have a committee a selection committee around May or June in order to make all the convention um, works during the summer. Uh, who can apply? Um, all um, our call for project are for uh, researchers uh, already in, uh, in place, in university, in a research entity. So you have to be linked to a research entity to, to, have, uh, to be uh, legal to apply. And why uh, to apply? Um, if you want to develop um, uh, game studies, um, research and you need found to buy new materials to hire an internship to um, cover the um, research cost uh, the grant is made for that of course it's a um, um, medium grant to, to cover a pilot program it's not a, a three four years with um, postdoc etc it, it, it it's a grant just to cover a pilot program but we are thinking people can start with that with that kind of grants and maybe give some ideas and some results to uh, looking for bigger uh, grants after that outside of getting lab but we are help we are trying to help uh, researchers to start working on, on board games and as the first two years uh, we don't have um, uh, put a specific theme in our call for project it was very open in, thematically um, maybe maybe not there will be uh, an orientation uh, this year we, d we are not sure about that uh, today, uh, but it will be described in our call for project repeat. Okay. Uh, next question. Uh, it's about the application yet. Do you have an idea of how many projects each year apply for Gaming Lab? Yeah, uh, the first year we, we received more than 20 applications. And we have a big increase since year one and year two, uh, because in year two we received more than more than thirty uh, per application. So we are very happy about the visibility we gain from from one year to to another. Um, we were very surprised because we were we were received uh, we received a, a lot of uh, Brazilian application. So I know Galapagos, uh, the um, subsidiaries from Brazil, from Asmode, uh, has done a really great job about uh, communicating about our corporate project last year, and, or this year, I mean, and um, we receive uh, high quality and diverse and, and diverse uh, application from Brazil. So we were very happy about that. And I hope we will find a solution to gain more visibility this year again. Um, next questions are still from some people that sent me before the live was on. Um, someone asked me, how does the company see the growth in demand for board games in the Brazilian market? Can you do it again? Uh, how does the company see the growth in demand for board games in Brazilian market? Uh, we, um, in Brazil, we're buying more and more board games. 
Yeah, from my point of view, uh, I think the Brazilian uh, market is very dynamic, but I think this question is maybe not relating enough to my to, to my activities so i will don't i, I won't have a, a deep answers for you uh, i know brazil for us is uh, uh, a young and dynamic country but I, I don't know about the market or specific metrics okay um yeah i, I think ne the, the next two questions are from the same person and i think he is more uh thinking about the market itself um, the next question he asked about the pandemic. Did the pandemic bring any problems to the board game industry? If so, how will the market reestablish itself? Um, if you yeah, it, it's a tricky question because I think um, for for what I'm I'm seeing uh, about the the market and especially in France as well, uh, is the fact that the board game market have. Uh, some impact for sure for all the shops and everything. Uh, but on the other hand, people are buying a lot online uh, and the novelties are maybe more difficult to defend because people are not going into the shops. But uh, big uh, games like all the traditional board games or uh, like Catan or Podemic for us are very um, aware. The awareness of the games are very high. So people are buying more of these kind of games than the novelties. Um, but globally, uh, the board game market um, is not that impacted uh, than the other uh, industry, I guess. Yeah, for what I heard uh, from Galapagos, uh, I think people are buying more board games, right? during the pandemic, maybe because they're yeah. having to stay at home. Right. Okay, uh, next question. Well, uh, we actually already had kind of the answer because he's asking, what is the company's relationship that directly or indirectly with Brazil? We have Galapagos here, right? Yeah, what is mm -hmm. the we, relation? We have we have a local offices, uh, Galapagos, uh, for us is a, a subsidiary. So uh, it's our main or only distributor in Brazil. Uh, they are running the Asmode policy uh, in, in that country. So uh, yeah, it's, it's an easy question, that one. <laughs> okay, next question is from Cassio Amador. He asked it in the chat. How was your start with board games? How, what was your first game? <laughs> Me, personally, um, I think it was card games with my parents. I was six years old and I played Bullet and Tarot, uh, the traditional um, card games. And after that, I play a bit of magic, a bit of uh, role-playing games. And uh, I have a big brother of friends who were uh, involved in the um, game design. And thanks to this big brother of my friends, I discovered a lot of new uh, modern board games. And I was uh, a young teenager. OK. <laughs> Uh, next question from Cassio again. He made three questions. Did you participate in the creation of any game? If not, do you want do you want to participate in the future? Mm. While I, while I was working for Asmode, I had the chance to participate in some playtesting, um, but I'm not a big game designer. I'm a big player. I play a lot and I play a lot, but uh, I'm not fond of game designing. I prefer to play finished board games than developing, so uh, it's not the part I prefer. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, next question again from Cassio. Do you have in Asbode a uh, place and time to play the games from the company during work hours? Um, 
it depends on your job. Uh, uh, some jobs has to play during during the work hours for playtesting to know the product, to being able to make some marketing um, strategy, for instance, or all the commercials has to know the, the product that they are selling. So uh, some employees need to play during the, the working day. Um, for uh, other employees, um, we can play during the lunch time. Uh, the lunch break. Uh, some people are eating very fast to have the time to play a game. Uh, people like me, for instance. Um, but of course, with the sanitary crisis, uh, everything like this are um, postponed and, and not doable again. So I really hope uh, the sanitary crisis will be over to being able to play at lunch again. Okay. Uh, I think a lot of people would like a job where they they have to play during work. <laughs> yeah. It's very nice. <laughs> but um, apart from the, from that, um, for entertaining, do you have any moment during work hour, not lunchtime or things like that, that you can play? Um, I'm thinking about work. Just for fun, um... I think sometimes people can just uh, call you to, pl to to play a game because they need players to test. So so you you can have this this kind of opportunity, but um, no, I think it's it, it's a work. So it, when you have some task, you need to do that. Okay, yeah, you you can play already. There is no need for more playing. <laughs> <I think. laughs> Okay, next question from Gustavo Yashel. Dear Misha, pick one. <laughs> Ticket to Rider, Eldritch Horror Series. Uh, I'm a big Hakam fan, so it's an easy one. So it will be Eldritch Horror, of course. Uh, I'm not lying about being a fan of Hakam. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> easy one, Gustavo. Thank you for the question. <laughs> okay, that was easy. Uh, let me see. Next question question from Augusto. Is there a website or some way to see all the documents and results up to date of the project research? Or they are close uh, to the general? No, it's something we want working for. Uh, for the moment, our website, our, uh, for the Gaming Lab website, is very basic. Uh, it's it's um, if there for, from the start and we want to make a second version of the website uh, more international and more easy to have access to this kind of assets um, of course all the project and all the results um, made through game lab project um, are made to be very public and open um, we want all the researchers uh, published their work they have made and of course we want to um, uh, help them to uh, diffuse this kind of publication so um, for the moment we don't we don't, we don't have a, 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 an open public database but uh, in the in the future there will be okay yeah th this already kind of answered uh, a future question i was going to make from teacher Paula Piccolo, when will we see the papers from the current projects, right? Um, first of all, like I just said, uh, we want the researchers uh, privilege their work uh, as usual. So uh, for instance, uh, Philippe Robert is working to publish his study in, in, a, in a journal. Um, so the, the result will, will be um, accessible online in these different uh, journals. And we will try to, uh, in our website, to, to make available all these assets we are doing, uh, like the final report or also, um, so yeah. Okay. Um, next question from teacher Paula Piccolo again. <laughs> Is the connection between games and education something natural or board game publishers sometimes have to aim educational area intentionally when they I, I think when they're creating a game, she means. 
Yeah, uh, I think in the <laughs> Asmode Studio networks today, um, the games are designed for um, entertainment and fun, and not a lot of studios are working into educational product at this time. Um, other uh, publisher outside of our studios are doing this kind of um, product, um, but. From my experience, since two years with the discussion I have with uh, the educational field or the research field, is um, a lot of educators are using games from uh, the market and um, use them as a tool for educational purpose. So um, for me, every game have, has a potential um to be educational in a way and for that moment uh, uh, in, in in that moment it's the biggest use i've seen um in, in, in this in this field yeah okay yeah because I, I think in my opinion when you're planning you when you're planning to do a board game to to teach something, maybe sometimes you you make a boring game, something like that. <laughs> so when you don't think about it, when you just make a game to be fun, you can use it anyway to to teach something, and it's fun. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, and Paula said that we're playing more pandemic during COVID. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think a lot of people are doing that too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Gustavo said he prefers Eldritch too. <laughs> and I may say me too, I, I think I prefer Eldritch. Um, well, he's making a question about, I think, board games. There are some expectative for expenses in the gaming lab program. Oh, it's about gaming lab, sorry. In number of projects and funds? Um, to maintain the quality of the selection, I think the, the threshold will be at five six year uh, again. Um, maybe if we have like an external partner to add to the game lab funds to finance uh, 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 an extra um, project uh, that could happen. For instance, the Spanish program um, about social exclusion is financed by uh, the F Libelud Foundation, uh, the foundation linked to the uh, Libelud publishers. So it was an external uh, grant first, for instance. Uh, but I think we don't want to. Um, to open too much of the, the the founding of project in order to to select the best uh, project in terms of quality, we, we prefer doing quality than uh, than quantity. But uh, we are thinking of, about put, putting some money into the uh, digital animation, uh, like I said, finding some solution to. Um, entertain our community about science and board games uh, on a digital aspect. So yeah, we, we are thinking about making investment in that part uh, to compensate the sanitary crisis, for instance. Uh, yeah, since you, you said that you, you talked about digital animation, right? Um, yeah. Gaming labs only for board games or does digital games are the digital games included? Um, it's it, it's a um, it's a border, you know. Uh, of course, uh, Asmode has a board game in our DNA, uh, and of course, Gaming Lab um, carries this DNA as well about the board games. But Gaming Lab, it's a games. A research sporting project in the game in general. It could be RPG, it could be um, maybe escape game or, uh, or, or card games or every games. It depends on the quality of the project and how 
uh, the project can be impactful for uh, the future of this uh, research field. So, so of course we are we are focused um, in our DNA on board games, but it's a game studies uh, program. We don't want to go too much into the video games because a lot of actions are, are already in place to support the uh, video games research. So we are not doing so much for video games, but yeah, for all, all, all kind of games, uh, we are happy to, to help. Okay. Maybe um, you have more chances with board games than with video games, right? To, yeah, I think to video to games are not very legit for our Rancopo project. But for instance, if you have a project on, um, uh, I don't know, RPG or a live RPG, uh, it's something that could be totally uh, acceptable for the Copo project. OK. Um, just out of curiosity for everyone <laughs> who's watching, I just learned from Misha that the the right pronunciation for Asmodee is actually Asmode, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think most people here in Brazil say Asmodee. Asmodee. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I think I think a lot of uh, English countries are saying Asmodee as well, but that's fine for me. Yeah, because there there's a double e, and you yeah. usually say. E instead of mm. A, right? <laughs> okay, I think uh, all the questions. Any more questions? No. Okay, that's it. Okay, thank you, Misha, for your presentation. Thanks, Thanks a lot. I hope I can help um, different people with the, with the talk today. Uh, thank you for the, for your invitation and the opportunity to present my work. And I hope to have some contact afterwards. Okay, I put some links below in the description for uh, the, G the gaming lab website, the game lab Twitter, Asmode, cool. Facebook, Instagram. Cool. <laughs> so <laughs> if anyone wanna see um, more. About about the project Asmode, you can check the description. Thank you again, cool. Misha. Thanks, Marcia. Bye, bye. bye everyone. Pessoal, então é isso. Muito obrigado pela participação de todos. Quem puder ali deixar um joinha, né? Se inscrever aí no, no canal ajuda bastante. Ah, é e também incentiva bastante a gente aí para tentar sempre estar tá trazendo uh, mais convidados tão importantes quanto o Misha. Tá ok, gente? Agradeço a atenção de todos. Uh, depois a gente vai tentar... A gente vai colocar uma versão aí legendada em português e se a gente conseguir, como eu falei, uh, vamos colocar também uma versão com legendas em inglês. Tá bom, então fiquem aí de olho. Muito obrigado a todos e até mais.